When people get fed up, they vote with their feet. And that's happening right now today. I'm going to show you where people are leaving from and where they are going to. This will set us up for the second part of the video, which is talking about the economic aspects. Why is this happening? All of that and more. Let's begin. I wanted to start with this. NYC wealth exodus drives billionaires bet on South Florida boom. So you could see right now Miami, West Palm Beach, they're building, they're developing, businesses are moving. That's the difference. It's not as if this is 2020 where you've got people saying, you know what, I can't live where I was before because I'm not needing to go there, the rents are too high, the mortgage is just too expensive, I'm going to go into this other place and that's the end of that. No, no, the actual businesses are moving there. So this just shows us that they are pushing deeper into South Florida in a bet that the wealth will continue migrating from the Northeast. They're talking about the projects that they're involved in and so on. It's not just one company, but this article highlights that one. People are looking from the Northeast, relocating for jobs, not retirement, and companies are looking for offices. It's tax issues, there's security issues, and there's just the ease of living. Right now, I know that Florida, it's got its own issues. Everywhere has their own issues. But you can look at it and say, hey, they're more favorable on taxation. They're saying to businesses, we want you here. Build here. Develop here. We, we will do it. We'll work together. That's a big difference from somewhere like California or like New York, where they're constantly creating regulations and adding on new taxes and all these different things. And what are they saying? We're going to tax the billionaires, but instead what happens? Taxes on you. Little things get added here and there, here and there. And you don't really realize it because it's just 15 cents there and it's just 2% over there. But suddenly that adds up and then you can't pay your rent and then you can't pay your mortgage and then the gas price is too high and all these things start adding up. So we can see that there have been developments in this regard and people are leaving areas like New York and California, and they are going elsewhere. They're going to Florida, being one, and we'll cover more in just a second here. In the past two years, major technology, finance, and law firms have moved or expanded to South Florida, drawn by the lower taxes and warmer weather. I think the weather probably has less to do with it. People are willing to tolerate the cold if there's jobs, if there's a future. But if somebody has to pay $4,000 for rent in Manhattan, and they're making, you know, $17 an hour or even $25 an hour. It's just not enough. You have to live below your means and you can't do that in these places, whether it's San Francisco, New York, other areas of California too, and a lot. Hey, even Miami is becoming extremely expensive, but we can see where the money is going to. They give a couple examples in here, like Blackstone and so on, that have decided, hey, the new offices we're going to build, they're going to be in Florida. I've seen all kinds of places in Florida, but certainly South Florida being one of those. Leaving New Jersey, uh, leaving New York, leaving San Francisco and others. New York will continue to grow, but it has its challenges and a lot of people who don't have to be there are not looking to be there. It's challenging, it's getting younger, the older people are moving out, the wealthier people are moving out. And I think that's really important as well. A lot of the wealth is moving and that's not a good sign. If the billionaires are moving and um, you know these billion dollar companies are moving, that takes a lot of revenue away and that means that the middle class has to bear the burden of that. I don't think people realize that. They're saying, well, tax those people and tax those corporations. But ultimately, in the end, the middle class has to bear the burden. And that means the middle class will uh, basically be pushed downward. That's not a good sign. I, I really, I really believe that. OK, this article here is talking about, um, you know, businesses talking about Tesla, all these different things that have moved out of California doing business elsewhere and so on. And they mentioned something here that I wanted to uh, cover. Inflation, though easing nationally, remains potent in the West, which suffered the highest price increases in the country over the past two years, mostly driven by housing costs. The median price of a house around Reno grew from 188000 in 2013, a year before Tesla's arrival, to five hundred and basically 20000 in December. Now, just think about that. You're going from 188, so less than 200, 
all the way to 520,000 in less than 10 years. Yet the industrial park that lured so many people here has no houses or apartments, leaving nearby Reno and Sparks already struggling with the housing crisis to absorb the flood of transplants without much extra tax revenue to cover the added services new residents inevitably demand. So there are jobs being created here, but the area itself can't really accept it all. And we've noticed this happening, right? Hey, cheap housing in this area, it's fantastic, they're building the jobs, but sometimes the area just doesn't have what it takes to support all these new people. Another factor which they mentioned in this article is that a lot of people, they don't like the people that have come to their area. So they're saying, we don't want these things here. They don't want the change in politics. They don't want a change in the vibe. And yet that's happening because the amount of people coming is not just one or two here and there. It's a lot of people and that's disrupting the pattern and the way of life for somebody who might just want to live in a small town. And that's the end of that. And want to recognize everybody's almost dropped the glasses and want to recognize everybody's name. But they can't do that now. Things are changing. And we see this in a lot of the tertiary cities, towns that suddenly they just grew from 2020 and on. Okay. Then we have this, the most popular states uh, for domestic migration. They're, they're looking at um, others. Let me just highlight it quickly. Census Bureau data. Okay. The association found that Florida and Texas topped the list last year with New York and California bringing up the rear this report followed another bit of evidence at red states contrary to what they talk about early in the article are the ones moving forward for the first time ever there are now more jobs in florida than in new york okay there we go that's what i wanted to say there are more jobs in florida than new new york what like just look at that red line okay that's florida if you look at the blue line that's new york isn't that incredible Look how much has changed. The chart goes back from 1990 up until the present, and this just shows us the total non non farm in Florida and New York really accelerated over the years. Yeah, during the financial crisis, Florida got hit really hard, a lot of vacancies, all that. But things have changed. Things have really changed, and now there's more jobs there. Now, who knows what happens in you know a year, two, or five years. But that is the trend. I hope I made myself clear here in this video. That's where the people are moving out of the expensive locations, the things that you've heard before, and they're moving into areas that are simply more affordable where there are jobs, it's not just about affordability for a lot of people, but it's the jobs. Where are there friendly taxes, regulations and prices? That's the trend. Okay. Now we have this just showing us the US median new home sale price versus the median household income. All you need to know from this, it is pretty obvious that people's income, median house, like take the average house, take the average income for a household. It's gone completely out of whack. That's all you need to know, really. The houses have become more expensive. Yes, wages had increased, looking at that, but not enough, not enough to pay for the housing. So what does that do for you and I? Well, it makes it much more unaffordable, unfortunately. And people, if they can't pay their bills, they start to get a little worried and then it becomes more than just worry. It becomes um, an actual you know, civil unrest and all that stuff starts to happen. Disney to cut 7,000 jobs and slash $5.5 billion in costs as it unveils vast restructuring. This is one company that said during 2020, we're not going to lay anybody off. We're just going to let them sit around because we want to help people. Now, cutting 7,000 jobs and I believe cut a whole bunch before that. Yahoo to lay off more than 20% of staff as it shrinks the ad business. 20%, that's a lot. You look at Rupert Murdoch's News Corp to cut 1,250 jobs. That's 5% of the workforce. And, you know, those are just a couple examples. And I cover this regularly. If you haven't seen this channel before, I cover all the data, like all of the important pieces of data. You stay tuned to this channel. Watch it at 1.5x. Watch it at 2x if you have to. But I will cover each and every piece of the important data that you can get. All you got to do, hit subscribe below. Look at this. During 2020 timeframe, when everyone's getting laid off and so on, 
firms laid off workers only after profits plunged. So this shows us through 2020 what had happened. All right, profits come down, then they lay people off. Well, what could happen this time around? Is that the expectation right here and now? All right, we're expecting that profits will drop. That's the expectation for 2023. Does that mean the layoffs will follow and unemployment will get worse? Well, the layoffs are there. Unemployment stats are showing better than ever because you know how it works. The best real-time indicator of profits is retail sales versus average hourly earnings. And the suggestion here is that as the profit declines, perhaps we will see unemployment go up. Time will tell, but that's what history shows us. Okay, you could see that right here very clearly on this chart. Then I just want to give you a couple examples. Look, look at what's going on right now. Google chatbot blunders as AI battle with Microsoft heats up. What was it all about? Oh dear, Google revealed their own uh, chat GPT rival, they call it Bard, and oh, it answered the question wrong. The stock pummeled. Look, investors pummel Google after Microsoft ramps up the AI wars. What did Microsoft do? They integrated chat GPT into their search engine. I tried to use it, it didn't even work for me, but I just tried it once and I instantly gave up. No thanks, Bing. Alibaba is joining the AI race. It's developing a chat GPT rival. The whole point here is everybody's gotta be using chat GPT in some way or else your stock is gonna get pummeled. Like it's, it's ridiculous. I use it, I use chat GPT, but I, I'm not gonna sit here and say that like it's working perfectly and it doesn't give the wrong answers. I mean, they say that it's a beta and the like not having AI, like all you gotta do, I said this on, on, on my Twitter, I said, if you want more money to flow through you, you want people to just give you capital, add AI to your name or add it to your business, your corporation. You, you're just going to get money thrown at you. Why? It's just like SPACs. It's just like any of these previous cycles that we've had before. They just add whatever's trendy right now and you get the cash. I mean, it's ridiculous. Lyft stock sinks 30% after sales outlook falls short of $1 billion. It could be anywhere. The reason I put Lyft in here is just to show you that, look, it could be news organizations, it could be tech companies, it could be anything, really, really anything. And right now, we're going to see profit taking a hit because of interest rates and because of the cycle that we're going through. The expectation is that the end of this year, there will be a cut in interest rates, the financial conditions will be a heck of a lot easier, and then things start to run more smoothly from that point. Until we see interest rates going down, companies are kind of still saying, well, you know, I don't know. The stock market, on the other hand, right now there's some profit taking after a huge upswing in the markets. Uh, but I'd be interested to see what happens right now. They, they don't care because the financial conditions have eased. The expectation of the Fed cutting interest rates this year. All the other central banks are kind of hinting towards, yes, this is the end of their cutting, probably somewhere around now. And so the markets love that. Different story. Economy, markets, very different. I explain all of that here on this channel. If you want to know more, just hit that subscribe button each and every day. I bring in the latest and greatest that others are unwilling to cover. So if you uh, want more, just subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.